Hey everybody, tonight we're diving into the dumpster fire that is price controls. And now on the surface, price controls might seem like a good idea, right? Making things cheaper, who wouldn't love that? It's like offering everyone free puppies. But just like those adorable fluff balls, price controls come with hidden costs. And trust me, these costs are way worse than stepping in a little puppy surprise. Throughout history, governments have tried to tinker with prices. They've tried to make things more affordable for their citizens. But here's the kicker. It almost always blows up in their faces. Think of it like this. Trying to control the economy is like trying to give a cat a bath. It's messy, it's chaotic, and someone's going to get scratched. So buckle up as we take a hilarious yet slightly terrifying trip down memory lane. We're going to look at the disastrous history of price controls. From ancient empires to modern nations, the story remains the same. Spoiler alert, it doesn't end well. Let's start with a classic ancient Egypt. Now these guys were ahead of their time in many ways. Pyramids, amazing. Mummification, super creepy but impressive. Price controls, oh boy, did they miss the mark on that one. You see, the pharaohs in their infinite wisdom decided to fix the price of grain. Because when the Nile floods and your crops fail, what's better than making sure no one can afford the little grain that's left? The result? Predictable as a pyramid scheme collapsing, shortages, black markets, and a whole lot of hungry Egyptians. It's like Pharaoh thought he could just yell at the economy and it would magically produce more grain. Spoiler, it doesn't work like that. Fast forward a few centuries and we arrive at the Roman Empire. These guys, known for their togas and gladiators, also had a go at price controls. Emperor Diocletian, a man with a name that sounds like a cough syrup, decided to tackle inflation with his edict on maximum prices. He set price ceilings on everything from food to shoes. Because nothing says stable economy like telling people they can't charge more for sandals. So, how did that work out for old Diocletian? Well, let's just say it went about as well as a chariot race with square wheels. The black market flourished, goods disappeared from shelves faster than you could say Veni, Vidi, Vici, and the Roman economy went into a tailspin. It turns out, even emperors can't defy the laws of economics. Who knew? The Middle Ages, the time of knights, castles, and rampant price controls. Yep, even in the Dark Ages, rulers couldn't resist the allure of messing with market forces. After the Black Death ravaged Europe, labor became scarce. Naturally, wages went up as lords competed for workers. Enter the Statute of Laborers, a law that tried to cap wages at pre-plague levels. Because when people are dying left and right, the best solution is to ensure the survivors don't get paid a fair wage, right? The result? Labor shortages, economic stagnation, and a whole lot of grumpy peasants. It's like trying to put out a fire with gasoline. Then came the French Revolution. Remember those guys? They loved baguettes, berets, and, oh yeah, chopping off heads. In the midst of all that revolutionizing, they decided to implement the law of the maximum. This delightful little law fixed the prices of essential goods because nothing says liberty, equality, fraternity, like forcing bakers to sell bread at a loss. What happened next? You guessed it. Shortage is so bad, Marie Antoinette probably wished she had eaten cake after all. The French Revolution teaches us a valuable lesson. If you're going to overthrow a monarchy, maybe don't take economic advice from a mob. Now let's fast forward to the 20th century, a century known for its technological advancements, global conflicts and, oh yeah, more price controls. World War II, a time of rationing air raids and price controls. Yep, even the United States, the land of the free market, couldn't resist the temptation to meddle with prices. The government, under the watchful eye of the Office of Price Administration, OPA, decided to fix prices to combat wartime inflation. The OPA, armed with clipboards and good intentions, set price ceilings on everything from sugar to shoes. Ensuring everyone had access to affordable nylons was part of the strategy. The result, a thriving black market, shortages of essential goods, and a whole lot of frustrated Americans. It's, it's like trying to win a war by fighting the economy at the same time. But wait, there's more. Let's hop over the Iron Curtain to the Soviet Union, a country known for its love of communism, vodka, and, you guessed it, price controls. The Soviet government, in its infinite wisdom, decided to centrally plan the entire economy. This included, you guessed it, fixing prices. Prosperity was determined by bureaucrats in smoky rooms deciding how much bread should cost. The result? 
chronic shortages, economic inefficiency, and a whole lot of people queuing for toilet paper. It's like trying to run a marathon with your shoelaces tied together. So, because price controls have a verifiably poor track record, no one would dare impose them today, correct? Unfortunately, because so few people study history, we are seeing a fresh batch of political faces calling on price controls as an economic fix, most notably presidential candidate Kamala Harris. In today's world, where information travels at the speed of light and social media amplifies every voice, the allure of quick fixes can be tantalizing. Politicians eager to address the pressing issues of rising costs and economic instability often overlook the lessons of the past. They propose solutions that seem simple and effective on the surface, but come with hidden costs and unintended consequences. So what can we do? The only thing we can do, educate, share this video with everyone you know. The best way to defeat bad ideas is with good information, by understanding the historical context and the real-world impacts of price controls, we can make informed decisions and advocate for policies that foster true economic growth and stability. Remember, knowledge is power, and together we can ensure that history doesn't repeat itself. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Brian DeMint's YouTube channel for a catalogue of financial videos that will boost your understanding of economics, ensuring you are well-equipped for the future. Also, Brian DeMint's books Bitcoin Evangelism and Parallel are available on Amazon. Together, we can make a difference.